Hi to everyone. Hope you're having a blessed day. We had a gorgeous day over here. Um, so I did go outside and took a beautiful, took a, just a wonderful stroll. It was just a gorgeous day. It was in the 70s today and the sun was shining. It was just beautiful. Uh, when I woke up this morning, I um, <clears throat> was led to read Colossians 3. And uh, I just want to read a little bit of Colossians 3. And uh, then I wanted to talk to you about the Ten Heavens of the Second Book of Enoch, which is what I'm led to um, just read. Um, I, I studied it before um, from a big, huge apocryphal book that I took out from the library several years ago, and then I just lost interest. Um, but for some reason or another, I'm just being led to the Second Book of Enoch again, because it mentions that there are ten heavens in this, in this Second Book of Enoch. So, um, it kind of connects here. So, when I woke up, I was reading Colossians 3. If then you were raised with Mashiach, seek those which are above, where Mashiach is, seated at the right hand of God. Y-H-W-H. Mind those above, not those on the earth. For you have died, and your life has been hidden with Mashiach in God. When, when HaMashiach, when the Messiah, who is our life, is manifested, then you also shall be manifested with him in glory. And then it goes on to tell us, therefore, put, our, put to death your members, uh, which are on the earth, whoring, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, greed of gain, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of Elohim is coming upon the sons of disobedience in which you also wa once walked when you lived in them. So thinking about that this morning, I was just led to uh, an article that I had online that I was uh, reading, and it was about this very thing, about uh, the ten heavens. So if you, if you don't know anything about the ten heavens or uh, don't know anything about Enoch, Enoch is mentioned in the Bible. Um, I'm just going to start reading, so I want to bow my head and bow my heart as I usually do and say, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, Lord God. And so we start off with the word apocrypha, and so what does it mean? The definition from Merriam-Webster is a writing or a statement of dubious authenticity. Or the second one is, the second definition is early Christian writings not included in the New Testament. So, um... That pretty much sums it all up. So it starts off with um, this writing that I copied. starts off with Ecclesiastes 12, uh, chapter 12, verse 13. Fear, which we know means to revere God. Re fear, Y-H-W-H, -H, uh, the Lord God, and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. The apocryphal text, commonly referred to as the second book of Enoch, or the book of the secrets of Enoch, contains a surprisingly traditional view of both the Judeo-Christian kingdom of heaven and its angelic inhabitants. This is in spite of the fact that this particular book has been lost for nearly 1,200 years. Apparently, this same document had been held in high esteem among at least some members of the early Christian church. So that's good to note. It contains numerous comments and remarks by the author Enoch. So Enoch is, it's been verified that Enoch is the one that wrote this, uh, of his vivid celestial journey through ten different parts of the kingdom of heaven, which are inhabited by a multitude of different angels, many of them with wings. Similar to the early church, the theological doctrine of multiple levels of heaven can be found in at least one of the Apostle Paul's letters and should continue to be understood as a thoroughly Christian belief, and I believe it myself as well. How long did Enoch live? So all the days of Enoch were 365 years. Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. So that little thing about, that little passage there about uh, Enoch walking with God than he was not means he was translated or transferred or raptured. His uh, body was changed from physical, from fleshly to spiritual form, which is what's going to happen with us. As we know, it's called the glorification. 
of our bodies. This is um, uh, this is from Genesis five twenty three to twenty four about Enoch walking with God. So thank you very much for um, joining me today. I'm just going to start the first few um, uh, first few realms. Some people call them realms of heaven. Some people call them levels of heaven. So in short, the following summaries of the second book of Enoch, uh, Enoch's Ten Heavens, thoroughly uh, reflect a Judeo-Christian understanding of the Bible and its enduring legacy. This seems to strongly suggest, while appearing as fictional nonsense to outsiders, it's not going to make any sense to anybody that doesn't have the Lord Jesus, that doesn't have the Holy Spirit, that's not going to make any, any sense. The standard Judeo-Christian set of, of belies concerning angels have serious precedent, not only in scriptures, but in many different um, books of the Apocrypha, including this one. So I didn't read the whole um, book, the second book of Enoch. I read the first book of Enoch, was fascinated by the watchers, what they did. Um, so I did move on. This is years ago. So I, I liked this article. So I'm, I'm going strictly by this author um, who wrote this, and I'm quoting everything he's, he wrote. Here are 10 brief summaries describing the 10 heavens of the second book of Enoch. At least there's 10. I seem to think uh, that there's more than 10 where God is uh, the most high God. I think that he might be in another dimension higher than the 10th heaven. That's just a personal thing that I learned uh, throughout the years. So an ancient copy of the actual book of Enoch. Here are the 10 summaries of the 10 heavens of, of Enoch or the 10 realms the ten levels. The first heaven is clouds, stars, snow, and morning dew. Located atop the clouds and inhabited by winged angels, this is where the rulers and elders of the constellations reside here with 200 angels. thought that was pretty interesting to note. Nearby is the great sea, larger than any of Earth's oceans, while the heavenly storehouses for both snow and morning are located here. And you can double check this with um, second, the book of Second Enoch in chapter 3, verse 1, chapter 4, verse 1, 5, verse 1, and 6, verse 1. You can probably get the PDF, uh, the .pdf file uh, if you wanted to read it online. Okay, so number two, the second heaven. This is the prison of darkness, death, and despair, a place of darkness where the angels of darkness who joined with Satan in his original rebellion have been imprisoned hanging from chains and awaiting judgment day. This is this can be found in 2 Enoch chapter 7, verses 1 through 3. And then the third heaven is the mercy of paradise and justice of hell, a paradise reserved for the good and the righteous, consisting of a fragrant or orchid grove with the fiery golden tree of life in the center, where the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, which is the tetragrammaton for his name, the Lord's name, Y-H-W-H. Some pronounce it differently than others. I just say Abba, Yah. Uh, rest, he rests there when visiting. The roots to the tree of life extend downwards to the Garden of Eden below, and there's four different springs flowing with milk and honey and wine and oil. 300 singing angels tend the garden so that's interesting that there are 300 singing angels who tend the garden. And now it's saying, in contrast, the northern section is a terrible place of icy, frozen darkness with a river fire flowing through it and inhabited by fierce, cruel angels with weapons who torture those sinners who have been con condemned there. Um, this can be confirmed in the second book of Enoch in chapter 8 verses 1 through 10, chapter 9, verse 1, and chapter 10, 1 through 3. I think I just about have enough time to read the fourth heaven. Twelve gates of the sun and the moon. This is it. This is the fourth heaven. The fourth realm in heaven includes the twelve gates and pathways of the moon, the six eastern gates, six western gates of the sun, along with all its different pathways. It is guarded and maintained by thousands upon thousands of angels. The sun is escorted daily by 8,000 other stars, meaning angels, 
and needs a hundred angels just to light its fire. Some of the inhabitants include six winged creatures who accompany the angels, exotic rainbow colored phoenixes and chakidri with heads like crocodiles, as well as armed soldiers who are constantly singing and playing musical instruments. Second Enoch chapter 11, one through six, chapter 12, one and two, chapter 13, one and two, 14, one and two, 15, one and three, one through three, 16, one through three, and 17 uh, chapter one. So I'm going to leave it right there. I'm going to make a part two and, and just read the rest to you. Uh, it tends to take a long time in uploading when I get over 10 minutes. So I did want to just do that for you. So have a blessed rest of your day, everybody. And I'm going to come right back on and finish um, and do the rest um, in part two. So thank you. Have a great day, everybody.